Hello, everybody. I am here with an incredibly special guest, someone who I friggin' love. I'm absolutely obsessed with him on Instagram, and he's so great that he's actually been my coach and changed my life. So I am so freaking excited to have this interview with the amazing man behind the donut, Brendan Lund of Brains for Brawn. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I don't know how to follow up that uh, introduction. <laughs> you pumped my tires so full of air. Well, it's no, but it's all totally justified. And I'm really, really excited to ask you some questions and kind of get in your head a little bit about a lot of really, really amazing fitness questions and things that I know are going to help everyone that's watching this. So for anyone who regrettably does not follow you on Instagram or Facebook, can you please give us like a little idea of who you are, who Brains for Brawn is, and just like anything we need to know about you. Okay, well, my name is Brendan Lund. I live in Edmonton, Alberta, and I own an Instagram page called Brains for Brawn. And pretty much what I do is I help people reach their fitness goals in a ratio that works best for them. And we focus on their mindset and mental health before focusing on the physical goals. I absolutely loved having you coach me. You were so helpful and completely helped me heal my relationship with food, which was like an unbelievably huge task. But on top of that, I'm absolutely obsessed with your Instagram. So that's where I found you. You have an absolutely amazing community around you and every single caption is like unbelievable, but obviously you are best known for your donut posts. And so um, I'm going to like pop a little picture here so that everyone can see this magic, but I just want to know what does a donut pose mean to you? Originally, the donut pose was supposed to represent a restriction free lifestyle. And the reason I used the donut was because I felt like it was universally recognized well, fairly. And then on top of that, they're aesthetic and they're pretty. So I figured if I put a pretty donut in front of my face, people would be intrigued to see what I was talking about. Absolutely. So, yeah, um, it's neat now because when people share them, they'll be like, this is what the donut pose means to Brains for Brawn, but this is what it means to me. And so it's kind of taken on a whole lot of meanings now. Yeah, totally. It's like kind of taken on like a life of its own, I find. That's like almost half the fun of following you on Instagram is seeing all the different donut poses and like seeing people getting really creative with it. And I know when we first started working together, I was like, absolutely, I will not be eating a donut. That will not happen on, like in my life because I was like getting hypnotherapy for sugar. I was like, it was the devil. I was not eating that shit. And I remember, I know. And then the day I did, you were like, I got a message from you and it was like, I've never been more proud. It was like the best. It was the best moment. Yeah. So I know that like you definitely encourage and coach people of like all different levels of fitness, but I'm just wondering for someone who's just getting started with like getting fit and, and trying to like get healthier, what's your advice for them? My main piece of advice for someone that just wants to, or just getting into fitness or, or wants to chase some health goals would be to not follow anything that you don't see yourself following for the rest of your life. So uh, if you feel like you're going to train seven days a week for the next four weeks, I would not approach that. Or if you feel like you're limited to 15 food sources, that's probably a good indicator. You're not going to want to do that either because it has to be something that you could see yourself doing from now until you die, essentially. Obviously, you don't have to do them that long, but if you don't see yourself being able to do it that long, you're just not going to be able to sustain the results. Definitely. That's, that's absolutely amazing advice. And I know that you deal with a lot of people who've done fitness competitions, and I know that's kind of where my problem stemmed from. And I'm just kind of wondering, like, what are your thoughts about that whole post-competition struggle, which is like so real for so many people? I feel like it comes down to how you reverse diet or if you even reverse diet. So 
until recently, a lot of coaches didn't provide reverse diets at all. It just wasn't really a well-known thing. And then it became a well-known thing, but it wasn't offered in packages. You'd have to rehire them after the show. And I feel like people that try to reverse end up adding calories in too slowly. And what happens is you will stay in a deficit after the show and just extend that period. And then you binge, which we've talked about. But yeah, people will overeat and then you feel extremely guilty and shame yourself for it. So the next day you either under eat or do extra cardio or go as far as to make yourself throw up or do something else. And it will lead to another binge and then more punishment and another binge and more punishment. And not only is it going to be physically detrimental and you're going to add body fat anyways, it's going to leave you in a pretty piss poor mindset because every day you're feeling guilty about what you're doing. So you're constantly feeling shame. And I feel like if people just increased food to where they felt full and satiated right off the bat, they would be much better off because yes, they would gain some body fat, but at least their mindset would be back to a hundred a lot faster. Definitely. Yeah. And that was like, by far, that was the biggest transformation for me was like my entire, like working with you. And it was almost right away. It was like my entire mindset completely transformed. And I mean, it's only been, I think it was like in September. So we're only talking like maybe somewhere between six and nine months that we worked together. Yeah. And it was like in that time when we first started, I thought it would be impossible for me to have a healthy relationship with food or for me to ever have sugar without you like finding me in a ditch with like powdered sugar all over my face and like my whole life's a write off. Like it was so extreme and it yeah. completely. It was only like a few weeks in when I was like, I am challenging you to eat a donut this week. And you're like, nope, no chance. It will set me off. No. Well, when you're ready. And eventually you did it. And that was all that mattered. And a churro. And a churro. <laughs> I all I had two donuts and a churro. It was amazing. But it was just, it was so empowering because like there were so many things that I learned from you. And it was like through you coaching me, but also simultaneously through reading your captions on Instagram, it was like this big package deal, which was so amazing. So um, definitely, maybe really quick, we'll discuss like what do you think is more significant, if there is one, between your client's physical transformation or their mental transformation? Uh, mental, 100%. And the reason why I would say that is because without the mental, I don't think you're going to have the physical. And if you do have the physical without the mental, you won't sustain it anyways. Yeah. So if you can choose one or the other, choose the mental every time because it is necessary to achieve the physical. I, I so, so agree with that. And like, um, I'm going to bring up one of your posts really quick here, but like, I just, I can't even like anyone who's watching this, if you're not following Brendan on Instagram, like just get on that shit like yesterday, because seriously, I, I still like to this day, I read every single post and I'm just like, it's like creepy. I like have to like every post within like a minute of it being posted because I love them so much. But one of my favorites that really, really changed like the way I look at myself and like the fitness industry and my goals of getting fit was the one that had like the three pictures of the three different women and people saying that they just want to get fit. And then you kind of like smashed that saying into a million pieces. So if you would, could you explain kind of what that post was about? Because it was life changing for me. So I don't even remember the athletes names now. But for that post, I used three different athletes. I used a world-class power lifter. I used the best long-distance runner, I believe 10,000 meter in the world. And I used the best hammer toss female athlete in the world. And I posted them in no specific order and labeled them all AAA. And I asked people to please order them from most fit to least fit and then explain that the reason they were all labeled A is because they were all extremely fit. So saying I just want to look fit doesn't really have a definition because being fit essentially is just being built for what you want to do. So if you want to run really far and that's your craft, then being having next to no muscle mass and no fat mass is very fit for you. And if you want to throw a hammer toss really, really far, 
maybe carrying some extra body fat is actually considered the most fit you could be for that sport. So um, the female hammer toss athlete I use has actually won track and field athlete of the year twice. So she really shatters the boundaries of what fit looks like. Um, of course, I still got um, some comments on Facebook from people that just don't quite understand, but what do you think? Not yet. <laughs> yeah, no, like that post for me, and I, like you're, you're gonna have to excuse me. I'm just like losing my mind, but I'm just, I'm serious. I just friggin' adore you. And like that post for me, it was like a complete, it like blew my mind because I was like, holy shit, like after doing a competition and seeing, like seeing myself way too lean, like not healthy, but so lean and everyone saying, oh my God, you're an inspiration. And then drinking water and gaining like a good 10 pounds back just from that. I thought that that's what I had to look like to be fit. And so when I read that, I was like, okay, well, what do I think is acceptable? And it, it completely changed the playing field for me. So, yeah, I mean, if it was like a typical definition of fit, like being able to run, jump, etc. When you're ready for a show, you're like the least fit human being on earth. You barely even have energy to get out of bed, never mind run or jump or do anything else. Oh my so. God. I know. That was like the most anticlimactic experience of my life. I figured like when I started, I was like, I'll be on stage and I'm going to be like the healthiest version of myself. And I was just like dead. It was like not fun. And then putting like Vaseline on your teeth because you're so dehydrated. Like you, you've no never one, felt less sexy in your life. No one told me that secret for my first show. Oh no. <laughs> Like we'll have to find a picture for that oh no okay so what do you think is like one of the biggest leading contributing factors of people failing to get fit or like and obviously get fit we just talked that's a bullshit saying but like their definition of being fit and healthy why do you think people struggle to achieve their goals and once they do why do you think they struggle to keep their results I think this circles back to my best advice for someone getting into fitness and it's just always falls down to the word sustainability. Like um, I feel like most people have these ideologies that they think they have to work out a certain amount of days. It has to be a certain amount of hours and it's just not true. So they feel like you have to go at least five times to the gym per week or you can't reach your goals, which isn't true. You don't even have to go four. you don't have to go three. And even if you can only make it two times, that might not be the fastest progression you could make, but it's the most optimal progression for you. Because if you were to try and overachieve and do three days a week, but you can't make it because your life is so busy, then you miss that day. It will start to get you back in a mindset of feeling defeated. And that's like, everything I do is to try and make a person feel like they're succeeding. So even when they message me and say, oops, sorry, this weekend I ate, way over my calories by 600 i'm like honestly i'm really glad you had a great time at your friend's wedding like i'm <laughs> yes yeah. that was that was one of my very favorite things about you coaching me because i was definitely one of those crazy people that was like oh my god like i fucked up bad and i'm like he's gonna kill me and you were like did you enjoy yourself and i'm like what you're like did you enjoy yourself i'm like well yeah and you're like great i'm glad you're living life merry christmas and i'm like Merry Christmas. But it was like, it was, it was huge for me because like you said, I was so into that binge punishment cycle that you talk so often about. And it was like, for you to not give me shit, I was like, okay, well, if he's not concerned, why am I so concerned? And it's like, you kind of, it's, it's so funny because when you loosen those reins a little bit, I, I stopped binging. Like, I don't remember the last time I binge ate anything. And like, I had a very complicated volatile relationship with peanut butter and it was like like now we're just homies and i'm like no nah, i'm good i'm good but it's it's unbelievable so i want to know why did you start brains for brawn like where did that come from and and second part of the question is has it exceeded your expectations i started brains for brawn originally because i wanted to work for my computer uh, I was I was already into fitness and I was already kind of coaching some people on the side and I thought it'd be neat if I could make enough money from my computer to be able to replace the monthly income I already had. And so I started Brains for Run trying to be a fitness coach 
and it has evolved since then. And I would say that, um, like you said, it's like a package deal now because people kind of learn from my posts as well as my coaching. And I don't think anyone describes me as a fitness coach anymore. Um, when I like when people come talk to me, they more describe me as like a self improvement coach. It's I've kind of developed my own weird niche where it's half fitness, half life advice which is so, so needed yeah it is a it's a definitely a unique instagram page uh, i don't know how i landed it but it's just the way i kind of progressed and um it has exceeded my expectations i definitely thought it would always be like a part-time gig and the reason why is because there's so many online coaches that i just thought the market was so saturated there was no chance of me standing out and somehow Where i've been able to are reach. though here i am though Just yeah it's amazing up. it's amazing and we needed more of those like hybrid coaches because i do like obviously me i'm all about like my spiritual squat and trying to get like the body mind spirit in like all together because like you said if you're neglecting one part then eventually the wheels are going to fall off and so yeah i absolutely i i'm so glad that we kind of cross paths because i do i love i love what you're doing and i'm a huge fan of it so I am wondering with someone like you out there, who's obviously like hugely successful and people are really buying into, you know, that whole concept of the mental health and the physical health going kind of hand in hand. Do you see like a shift in the fitness industry coming? Like, do you see more of that kind of going on? I definitely do. I feel like, a lot of the biggest influencers now, well, I hate that word, but a lot of the biggest influencers are not known for just having sweet abs or nice glutes. Um, I feel like they're actually more getting to be known for what they have to say. And so people are being a little more honest and talking about their cellulite and talking about whatever. And it's, see, it is like, very helpful coming from someone a female with 700,000 followers to actually tell her followers like hey I have cellulite um, because we know that anything on social media has to be taken with a grain of salt like you don't know what the person I've met a million people from social media that definitely look different in real life and they even act different and so yeah um, I mean I think it is a good rev mini revolution we're in of of people being more recognized for what their brain has to offer versus what their body has to offer. That's good. So. Yeah, that's that's really great. So a little bit more about you. I would like to know what inspires you. What inspires me to what? To whatever. What in? I don't know. I would say what inspires me to continue growing and pushing myself is entropy. So when I look around at anything, um, it really hits me to just realize that none of it is going to be here one day. So uh, even, even like this computer or any, it sounds silly, but like this physically will not be here one day and neither will my house or, my phone or anything. So it makes it a little easier for me to enjoy the place I am and like really be in that moment, knowing that everything that is within my vision will not be here at some point or another. So I have to enjoy it while I can. That's so that is what keeps me. That's deep. That's deep. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, but that's, that's really reflective though. And it's sort of like almost like a sense of awareness, I guess. Right. And, and presence. Yeah. And you I think a really like, fancy name for it. Yeah. And I know like everyone stresses living in the moment right now. Um, but I think part of the beauty of life is being able to get lost as well. Like, I don't think being in the moment all the time is what we should strive to do, but maybe a mixture of both. Because I feel like the fact that we have the ability to like contemplate things like um immortality and like things that we can't even actually well that we think we can't achieve um i feel like that's an indicator that we should be contemplating those types of things and spending some time 
outside the moment and maybe living above our consciousness for some time in the day. Dang. Dang. All right. I like that. We're going to see, I'm going to have to interview you again and we're just going to get like right off fitness and we're just going to get deep into it. I weird. like that. I like that. Okay. So I want to ask one more question about you and then I want to just get weird and ask you some random questions because those are my very favorite. <laughs> okay. So what do you want to be remembered for? Like, what's your, what's your legacy if you could choose? You know what? I want to be remembered for documenting a life of altruism. And that is the goal. I want to document a life based off of giving and show people what can be achieved if your number one goal is always giving. It's always putting someone else before you always under promising and over delivering um so that's pretty much what i want my life to look like to be like an exact reflection of what your life could look like if you followed a life based self giving that's amazing just stop like i already i'm already like the president of your fan club so just shut up already with being so charming and sweet all the time <laughs> start a fan club. Start okay a now i'll just try to stump you with some random ones because you're just you're just being too good. Um, okay. This is actually an interesting one because you're, you're very reflective and I really like that because it's not really like a fitness thing to be really thoughtful and like really think things through so much. Yeah. I'm an so, overthinker for sure. Yeah. I would like to know, what do you think about when you're alone in your car? You know, it's a tough question. I I should have, I should have, thought about it today while I was driving around <laughs> but I feel like it's it could be anything in the way that like I just get lost on any thought so if I start to think about what I'm going to do when I get home for work um or when I get home and have to do work um I will get lost in like why do I have to do that and like, what am I achieving doing that? And how, how is it going to make someone else feel when I complete that? Or does it even need to be done today or can it be done tomorrow? And so even like something as simple as doing an interview like this will lead me to 30 minutes of introspection for no reason. And I did write a post, just wrote a post about that. Um, and I called it CQD my condition, um, chronic question disorder. I think it's an amazing disorder though, because it's like, obviously that's a part of what like your magic is obviously. And like, yeah. I've read books about that, like it, cause it helps you get off being on autopilot. Cause if you're not asking questions, you're just like driving and like do, 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 do. And, and then you get from one point to one point and you're like, I don't remember driving there. Whereas maybe you don't remember driving there, but at least you're like doing something, you're accomplishing something. So I think that's cool. Yeah, that is an issue I have a lot, is not <laughs> remembering how I even drove there. Yeah. Um, but I think that's part of, I should be spending at least half my time in the moment too, which is something I struggle with. Like I spend a lot of time elsewhere. Yeah. So in like public, it sometimes might seem like I'm shy or um, introverted but realistically I'm just thinking about something else that's so far gone from what's actually going on. Okay. Well, I'm going to come down there and we're going to like meditate together and I'm just going to like force you there. It'll be great. <laughs> I know it's something I need to implement more of a form of meditation. Yeah. I don't do any of them. It's the worst. I know it's hard. It's hard, especially because you obviously enjoy thinking and it works for you. So it's, it's obviously hard to give that up. I've got two more questions. Now, this one, maybe you won't have an answer, but if you do, I very selfishly need to know. You can tell it's going to be bad because I'm already smiling too big. I'm up to no good. I would like to know if you have a most embarrassing moment at the gym. I do. I do have a most embarrassing. It's amazing that I can even think of this, but um, by a long shot, the most embarrassing moment I've had was about, I want to say a year ago. And I was living with a girlfriend at the time and I went to the gym and I pulled my gym clothes out of my gym bag 
and I was getting dressed. And when I put my shirt on, two thongs fell on the floor out of my shirt. And there was like seven guys right there. And they all just looked at me. I was like, my girlfriends, bro. Like, I, I didn't know what to say. Like, I didn't even know they were stuck in my shirt fresh oh out of the laundry. But God. And like two, like, like, like one wouldn't have been bad enough. But like, let's just go with two. Yeah, it was like I was collecting them in my shirt or something. That's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. Have, At least they were like nicer underwear. Like maybe it would be worse if it was like a big old pair of granny panties or something. Maybe that would be even more embarrassing. So we'll count our blessings there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that is, that's a good one though. That one's really good. I thought for sure you were going to say that it stuck to your shirt and you went and worked out. So it, well, again, it could have been worse. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been much more embarrassing. Yeah, maybe. Okay, now this... This question's for like all the marbles. This is what everyone wants to know. Oh no, I know which one it is. <sighs> what? Like, describe for me and spare no details. The best donut you ever ate. The best donut I have ever eaten was from a place called Bob's Coffee and Donuts, and I bought it in the Grove in Los Angeles in their outdoor slash indoor farmer's market. And it is actually the donut that I posed with the binge punish repeat post. It is an M&M donut. Oh. And it was by a long shot the best one. Um, nothing has compared. I feel like it's just the mixture of like crunchy M&Ms with really soft donut. It was just perfect together. Um, yeah, I've tried a lot of donuts, so mm -hmm. I got some good ones and some ones that I really, I actually, this is embarrassing to say, but I bought a donut at Blue Star, which is a pretty famous donut place on uh, Abbott Kinney in LA, and it was so gross, I put it in the garbage. Whoa. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Like, that's and that, intense. That is intense. Did I, you I take a picture with it first, though? I didn't. Okay, no, I'm, I'm glad. glad. See, that's how authentic you are. Like, that Instagram is truth. You're like, no, this does not cut, make the cut. Yeah, and if I would have posted it, I would have said, like, this donut was disgusting. Just like, As a know. warning, like, don't ever eat this. Don't eat this one. That's yeah. awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to the day that you go to Randy's Donuts in L.A. Because I was yeah, supposed I to get that shot for us, and I, I dropped the ball. That's, like, with the big dude with the donut? Yeah, the big yes. dude with the donut. I'm going to have to find it. Because... Um, Everyone I know from LA is always talking about DK's donuts and California donuts. Mm. So I'm going to have to hit all three because I'm going back on June 29th. So that's, that's probably best. Yeah. You've got a, like, there's a lot of donuts in the world and I'm sure like you have the whole world to conquer. So I feel like rather than the world being your oyster, it's like your big, amazing M&M donut. Yeah, exactly. That's Basically. it. My Basically. donut is like the circle of life. <laughs> yes it is okay yeah see i need to get this like filled in or something donut sprinkle. is life <laughs> it's something to think about yeah it's it is. Think about. maybe i'm getting too crazy maybe that's what i need for my very first tattoo because i'm still a virgin. if yeah that would actually be incredible if i i would like to see that most definitely so i cannot thank you enough for spending this time with me and sharing some amazing truths about fitness and your opinions and your favorite donut, which is hugely important. Very important. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for spending this time with me. And um, I know if, if someone watching this like has any idea what's best for them, they're going to want to know everything about you. So where can we find Brains for Brawn on the interwebs? Where can we find you? You can find me at Brains for Brawn on Instagram, Brains for Brawn on Twitter, and that's all I'm pretty much using right now. Yeah. I'm not, I just feel like hitting two social media is hard is better than spreading myself thin. So. Exactly. It's quality over quantity, people. So just get there, hurry up. I know that you're probably watching this on your phone anyways, so just close this down and get to the nearest social media site and find Brains for Brawn. So yeah, have the absolute best night ever. And thank you so much for spending this time with me. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Just trying to get, just end this meeting and <laughs> you're the best. <laughs>
For 10 steps to beat stress and feel your best, check out my book, Confessions of an Ex Hot Mess. I've also got a free ebook and a guided meditation if you click down below. For last week's video blog, click up here, check it out. And while you're at it, click down here and subscribe.